So, you look really nice today. What are you wearing? Kimono. Kimono. Mm. what's going on next to our hotel room. So we're staying in what's arguably the dirtiest, sort of um, most dangerous area of Osaka, at least it's called that. It's not dangerous at all and it's not actually that dirty. Although we have seen a couple of homeless people and you know cigarette butts on the sidewalk and stuff which is so far a first here in Japan. Uh, it's called the Shin Imamiya area well near the Shinimamiya station and uh, well we're walking around and apparently there's a really cool area here it's called Denden town which is kind of like a small Akihabara so we're gonna go check it out it could be quite a lot of fun so um, it's only about 1.2k walk so we're on our way uh, however on the way we've come across a fairly nice looking place here so we'll take a little gander and see what's what So after having lunch in this kind of touristy area, we ended up in Denden Town. Now, I'm not going to cover Denden Town because I actually went to Akihabara in Tokyo, so we can see the real thing in an upcoming episode. Anyway, after messing around and looking around, we decided we'd go to a local market to pick up some ingredients to actually cook our own food. Now oh, this is a, a kuromon. So this this is like, a, I guess, black gate. <laughs> um, this is a big market, like an outdoor, well, not outdoor, I'm lying, semi-outdoor market. Kind of like a wet market that you find in China. So we're going to be buying stuff to make food at home today, because we've been, um, we've been overdoing it in the restaurants and it gets really pricey around here. That's one thing about Japan is that it's a pricey place. So if you're coming here for a holiday, make sure you've got enough money saved up to enjoy yourself. Otherwise, you'll be just kind of uh, counting your pennies. Now this is actually quite a famous little market here in Osaka and you can find everything you need, fresh seafood and meat, that sort of thing. You can have street food there as well. There are a couple of supermarkets attached to it as well and you can basically get everything you need. So we had quite a lot of fun picking out ingredients and all that nonsense. Hi, Edis. Hi, this is a now what's going on here? Well, my fiancé really wanted to get some photos taken in a traditional kimono. And in fact, there are shops that rent kimonos and they help you wear them and everything, but it's really, really expensive. And while we were walking around in the market, I spotted a second-hand kimono shop. Now, you know how Japanese people look after their things? Buying a second-hand kimono is like buying a brand new kimono that's probably only been worn once before. So it worked out to actually be around about the same for me to buy a second-hand kimono rather than rent one for her the next day. Now, I'm incredibly, incredibly glad that I filmed the whole fitting process, you know, trying on the kimono and everything, because the next morning I had to actually help her wear it, and it took literally an hour for me to figure out how to get this kimono on her. And I know that it's probably not perfect and there are probably some some Japanese people out there that are currently face palming and saying you did that wrong etc etc but give me a break it's my first try for those of you wondering where we took the photos we took them at the Osaka castle so that is Osaka Jo or Osaka castle and it's very pretty it's really picturesque and beautiful there, lots of sakura trees and, you know, everybody's still celebrating hanami and all that sort of thing. If you guys want to take a look at the pictures, they are actually on my Facebook page, so you can get it from the description and go check them out. But yeah, that pretty much brings our Osaka adventure to an end, because the next day we were heading to Tokyo.
So guys, I'll see you in the next video where we get to step into Tokyo and see what that's all about. And until then, as always guys, stay awesome.